Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be a book haul. I have been very naughty and I have bought quite a few new books recently so I thought I would come on and tell you what I've been buying. So the first book that I bought is Dragon Rising by Katie and Kevin Sang. This is a 9 to 12 year old middle grade um, fantasy about four children who discover that they have an affinity with dragons who are thought to be lost to the world. This is the fourth book in the series so I can't really tell you what this book is about because it would spoil it for the previous ones. I haven't read book three yet but I thoroughly enjoyed book one and two and I really want to get on and finish the series. I don't think the series is finished yet, I think there might be another book to come after this but uh, they are thoroughly enjoyable and I do recommend them for the 9 to 12 year olds and above because they are great fun to read. Dragon Rising was actually the only book that I went into Waterstones for. However, I decided to go and have a wander around the adult sci-fi and fantasy section and I picked up Equal Rights by Terry Pratchett. This, this is the third book in the chronological publication order. I uh, have started collecting them and every so often I pick them up. I'm trying to buy them in chronological order so that I remember to put them on my shelf in the correct order. Although I don't know why because they have a publication list in the front of the book. Anyway, this is the first book in the Witches series that Terry Pratchett wrote into the Dream Discworld series. And it's about a wizard who is dying and he passes his staff of power onto the eighth son of an eighth son. Only he doesn't realise, because the baby isn't born until he dies, that the baby's actually a girl. So this is a bit of a funny take on, funny fantastical take on um, equal, equal rights. Um, because women can't be wizards and men can't be witches. But who says they can't so it's about how um a witch then takes charge of this young girl and takes her to ankhma pork to try and get her enrolled in the wizards university um and it's about the hilarity that ensues from there uh, i did thoroughly enjoy it i read it a couple of years ago reread it a couple of years ago the witches series is not my favorite series in the disc world um my favorite series is actually the night watch uh, but I haven't got to those yet. Um, but yes, I'm looking forward to continuing my reread um, and having more of these on my shelves. And I didn't stop there. Um, I was then looking around, just generally looking around, looking at the books that I've seen on YouTube because I watch a lot of YouTube and I watch a lot of fantasy YouTubers. And yeah, um, I picked up Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. This has been really hyped up by a couple of my favourite YouTubers. And when I saw it there on the shelf, I had to pick it up. It's about two sisters um, and a murder and a quest for vengeance. And it's also fantasy romance. I, I love fantasy. I love romance. Put the two together. Um, you've got some of my dream writing right there. So... I decided, yeah, I definitely need to give this a go. I think I'm going to enjoy it, so I'd probably rather have a copy than get it from the library. Um, so yeah, so I picked that one up as well. And I, I just, I love the blurb on the back. Um, I think it's really, really uh, has spoken to me and I'm definitely going to pick this up very, very soon. And the fourth book that I picked up was because I decided I might as well wander around the rest of the store while I was in there, or at least the, the fiction part of the store. And it was a complete whim. And it's because it's an author that I've read quite a few of her books in the past. But then I found that she was quite samey in her writing style. And I decided that actually I'd had enough of her. But when I saw this book, I had to I, I had to pick it up because I haven't read anything from her for a while. And I did love the stories that I used to read from her. And this book is The Dreamweavers by Barbara Erskine. This um, Barbara Erskine writes historical fiction, um, but mixed with present day. So you'll have a timeline running through uh, the book, which will be historical. 
and you'll have a timeline which will be modern day and she will weave the two together so the story will weave the two together this book is set in Wales and it's uh, set around the Saxon King Offa um, and there's romance in here and yes it's about a woman then in the present day who owns a cottage and has some disturbing visions um, and gets pulled into the past through those visions um, not literally but um yes her her mind will be caught up with the past i absolutely love lady of hay by barbara erskine it was the first book of hers that i read and every time i read it i want to go to hay on why what reader doesn't want to go to hay on why um but yes yeah, she always drags me there in my mind and i really want to go and there's um a place called Corfe uh, near where i live it's in dorset and it has a ruin of a castle there which is it part of lady of hay and i really want to go there as well even though hardly any of the book is set there i have no doubt that dreamweavers is going to make me want to visit the parts of wales that are talked about in this book because she always does um and yeah i just i anticipate loving it um my mum actually because i did a live i did actually a um a haul on my instagram page which my mum saw and then she went to the library and saw this on the shelf in the library and picked it up and she's reading it and she's absolutely loving it she's also a fan of barbara erskine hasn't read any by her for a while again so yes um i have no doubt that if my mum is enjoying it then so will i and then the next three books are part of a series and those are a curse so dark and lonely a heart so fierce and broken and a vow so bold and deadly by Bridget Kemmerer. Uh, the series is called A Curse of Dark and Lonely series. It's about um, the fictional world of Emberfall. Um, a Curse of Dark and Lonely, the first book, is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, which was the reason why I picked it up in the first place. Um, I had it on my Kindle and I read it a couple of weeks ago and I absolutely loved it. I'm going to put two of these down. Yes, so I absolutely loved it. And I immediately reserved a copy of A Heart So Fierce and Broken from my library um, because I didn't want to shell out for it at that point. I didn't want to pay out for it at that point. But in the last few days, I have consumed a heart so fierce and broken and loved it i immediately want to move straight on to a vow so bold and deadly i can't get to my library um for another couple of weeks and i want to read it quicker than that and i don't want to buy it on my kindle i want to hold the physical book in my hand while i read it so yeah i knew my waterstones had a copy in stock and yeah i went to buy it and i bought the other two as well um this is about like i say like i was trying to explain earlier it's about um the fictional world of emberfall um harper who lives in washington dc is pulled into the fictional world by gray commander gray to be the love interest of his prince prince wren um they break the curse in the first book it's not a spoiler to tell you that but divisions then ensue because there are pro wider problems in the kingdom and there are rumours that Prince Wren is not the actual heir to the throne, um, which is what's dealt with in a heart so fierce and broken. Um, and then a vow so bold and deadly follows straight on from that. And I think it's actually going to be based more around Harper um, in this one. Um, Harper and Wren weren't so much in A Heart So Fierce and Broken. It was more around Grey and another character called Leah, Leah Mara. And I think this book is going to follow her as well. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the conclusion to this series. Um, how is it going to be resolved? How is uh, the Clash for the Kingdom going to work out? Um, is there ever going to be trade between Emberfall and its rival, Sil Shallow? Um yes i'm really looking forward to this this is definitely going to be started my my tbr for april at this point is completely out of the window i haven't read anything i'm supposed to read i haven't even started my um 
uh, my booked club pick, which I'm going to have to do. But yes, A Vow So Bold and Deadly is now very, very high on the reading list. So those are the seven books that I have bought in the last couple of weeks um, while I've been toing and froing to town. Um, yeah, I need to stop. I need, I need to stop walking into town at weekends because it's not doing my bank balance any good. Um, I'm buying too many books. Um, yes, so I'm now going to have to find room for this on my shelves behind me. Uh, so don't be surprised if there's a little unhaul coming your way soon because I'm thinking that there are a few books on my shelves now that I'm probably not going to read. Um, so yeah, so I'll I'll let you know what I decide to get rid of so I can fit these in. Have you bought any books recently? If you have, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to chat with you all there. If you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, then please do subscribe to the channel. I've seen a little flurry of subscribers again recently, which I'm really loving. It's great to see you all and welcome to my channel. If you don't already know, then I make videos and I put one up every Monday at 6.30pm UK time. Occasionally, like this video, there will be the odd extra one in between. And I will look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Bye!